you are a carrier of the glory of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, a dwelling place, a habitation for the Spirit of the living God. You establish dominion wherever you go. You are a walking atmosphere, a living atmosphere. You are heaven on earth, and wherever you go, wherever you enter, you change the dynamics of that place. You shift things in the heavenly realms as you move about. And wherever you go, you establish the atmosphere of miracles. Wherever you go, that place becomes a place where healing can happen, where deliverance can happen, where salvation can happen, and believers can be refreshed in the power, the presence, and the Word of God. Hello, I'm David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church. Today on Spirit Church, I'm talking about being a carrier of the glory of God. This means an atmosphere of heaven that moves about in the earth, establishing God's dominion and destroying every work of the devil. Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's gonna lead you in a worship song right now, How Great Is Our God, which is one of my favorites. And after you're done singing that song with him, we're gonna come back. I'm gonna begin this lesson by telling you about a miracle that happened in Indiana. It was one of the most unusual miracles I've ever seen in one of my miracle services. Go worship with Stephen and come right back. I'm gonna tell you about that, Stephen Moctezuma. How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God Sing how great How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God Oh, we sing name above all names He's a name above all names Worthy of all praise And my heart will sing How great is our God Sing name above all names He's a name above all names He's worthy of all praise And my heart will sing How great is our God Well, I pray that you enjoyed that worship with Stephen Moctezuma and that as you worship, you prepared your heart to receive the Word of God today. Now, stick around until the end of Spirit Church because I want to pray with you. And when we pray today, I believe that you're going to sense the manifested presence of the Holy Spirit in the room that you're in. Wherever you're standing, sitting, or lying, I believe that that place is going to be invaded by the tangible, manifest glory of God. And I believe by faith that it's going to happen to you. And I believe that by faith, it's going to transform you. So stick around until the end of this lesson, and we're going to pray together. But remember, you got to listen to the Word so that it prepares your heart. So I was going to tell you this story. I was in Indiana, and I was conducting a three-service miracle service. So it was three nights in a row. I did. I think I did a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. But the miracle service was just powerful. All three nights were amazing. The Holy Spirit moved. People were saved. People were delivered. People were healed. The glory of God sat upon the building like a cloud, and there was just a very thick sense of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The atmosphere was electric. Faith was alive in the people, and the power of the Holy Spirit was moving. I think there was like three demons that got cast out in one night, and miracles of all different kinds. In fact, some miracles led to people getting saved because their family members watched as other people got saved and healed and they would want to experience that miracle themselves. So it was just a, it was a powerful move of God, a genuine move of God's Holy Spirit. And so we're ending those three nights and it's the third night. 
And I'm standing in the sanctuary. I'm talking with the pastor about the service and how things had gone. And typically the pastor and I, whoever hosts me, will have a conversation to just kind of go over and debrief and revisit what the Lord had done over the past few days. So this pastor and I are standing in a sanctuary of his church and we're talking. The people are just about dispersed. The building's almost empty except for a few dozen people who were fellowshipping and hanging around after the event. So the pastor and I are talking and we're just remembering everything the Lord had done. I'm excited, he's excited. And I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go back to the hotel. I'm gonna go get some rest. And my team and I were leaving. I turned to start walking toward the parking lot. And I put my hand out toward the door. And just as I was opening that sanctuary door to exit the building, I heard this commotion behind me where the pastor and I were talking. And so I turned to look and I see all of these people that are grouped around in a circle. And the pastor has tears in his eyes. He comes up, he says, Brother David, come here, come here. You got to see this. So I was curious. I, I let the door go, turned around and followed him back. And when I went to go see what was happening, they presented to me this baby that someone had got from the nursery. They picked him up after the service. The service had ended and they hung around a little while like we did fellowshipping and they went to go get their baby out of the nursery. So they show me this baby from the nursery and they're, look, they're saying, look, Brother David, what do you see? And I'm looking at the baby and I say, well, the baby looks perfectly normal to me. I don't see anything that's out of the ordinary here. And they said, that's exactly right. When this baby's mother dropped the baby off in the nursery, the baby's eyes were crossed. It had been that way since birth. But when the mother went to go pick up her baby from the nursery after the service, the eyes were completely straight. And I said, look, Brother David, look at this baby's eyes. And I looked at the baby's eyes, and from what I could see, they were perfectly straight. There were no signs of them ever having been crossed. And the mother was weeping. The church was weeping. And this was a powerful miracle that had occurred. But I thought it was odd, because this was one of the first times that I had seen a miracle that had happened nowhere in the service, but just on the property of the building. And I said, Lord, this is amazing what you've done. And the Lord began to reveal to me more often that he could work miracles. This is years ago, so I was still thinking that it was, you know, only through the laying on of hands. But since then, I've discovered a key in the healing ministry, something that's a far more effective approach to ministering God's healing power to the sick. And that is the healing presence of Jesus. You see, when we lay hands on the sick, we're limited to how many people we can lay hands on. But when we establish by preaching of the word, by worship, by declarations of faith, the presence of God and the dominion of God in a place, we cause that place to become a heavenly atmosphere. And that's what had happened. The power of God was so intense, so vivid, so tangible, that whatever it was that was happening in the service permeated the property and caused that baby to be healed. This reminds me of a scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse 11. The scripture says this, the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Now, in context, this is talking about when you and I are raised again at the resurrection. But in passing, the Scripture describes a powerful reality about the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And often we read scriptural truths with which we've become so familiar that we no longer have that passion, that we're no longer stirred with excitement when we hear it. But I want you to reconsider what this verse is saying, despite the fact that you may have heard it many times before. This scripture is saying that the same Holy Spirit that Christ carried within his holy being, the same Holy Spirit that was with Jesus dwells in you. And I want you to really think about that. This is the same Holy Spirit who at the beginning of creation hovered over the face of the waters, hovered over the face of the deep. He was witness to the creation of man. This is the same Holy Spirit who would strive with man in the book of Genesis just before the flood of Noah. This is the same Holy Spirit who in the book of Exodus is described as giving certain men wisdom to participate in the creation of the tabernacle and the garments of the priests. This is the same Holy Spirit who stirred the psalmist David to write beautiful stanzas of worship, to write beautiful poetry dedicated to God that would reveal his character, his nature, and his actions. This is the same Holy Spirit 
who was with Jesus when he drove out demons and cast away sickness. This is the same Holy Spirit who spoke to the early disciples, revealing the nature of Christ and the identity of Christ. This is the same Holy Spirit who was in the book of Acts, empowering the church in their every action. The same Holy Spirit who inspired the writing of the scripture and moved the prophets to declare the truth of God, that moved the prophets to declare the future. The same Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit, who was at work from Genesis to Revelation, that same Holy Spirit, who dwelt within the holy being of Jesus, dwells in you. So that when you carry this, it makes a difference. When you carry this Holy Spirit within your being, you have become an atmosphere. I want to encourage you today. You are not ordinary. When the Holy Spirit of God fills you, you become supernatural. When your being in your spirit becomes one with God's spirit, something begins to occur that affects you from the inside out. Something begins to happen with you. And if you'll surrender on a daily basis to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to His direction, to His instructions, without delay and without compromise, then every day it will become less of you and more of Him. You know, the scripture describes in the book of Acts that Stephen the martyr looked up to the heavens and was, he captured a vision of Christ at the right hand of the Father. But this same disciple, when the scripture describes this same story, the scripture says that his face begins to shine bright like an angel. Same thing happened to Moses. There is this shine that comes on a believer. There is this glimmer of hope that emanates from your being. You become that atmosphere. You become the dominion of God. You become the difference maker. Let it be known that when you walk about, you are to carry yourself with a Christ-like grace, with a spirit-filled class, with a heavenly elegance, with an air of royalty, because you are heavenly. You are God's representative in the earth. You are an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. When your being becomes one with His being, your presence becomes synonymous with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And wherever you go, you affect change. Acts chapter 4 verse 13 says this, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. When you're with Jesus, when you carry this presence and cultivate this presence and are aware of this presence and respond to this presence that's on your life, people begin to take notice. There's something different about you. There's something different on you. I've told this story several times before, but one time I was in an elevator and I was taking that elevator down. I was in a hotel. I'm taking the elevator down and I'm stopped on a floor, several floors before the one I wanted to stop at. And so these two women walk in and they get into the elevator with me and they also tell me a number. They want to go to the lobby. So we're going down to the lobby together. But before we could even reach the bottom floor, these women begin crying. One of them begins shaking and crying. And they're both looking at me. My curiosity gets the better of me. And so I asked them, why are you crying? And one of the girls spoke up and said, I don't know. There's just something on you, something about you. Now, obviously the Holy Spirit doesn't always manifest his presence in this way, but it becomes more common for supernatural things to occur around you as you tend to this presence, as you walk in an awareness to this presence, as you live and think in this reality. And it can't be faked. You know, Peter and John, after healing a crippled man in Acts chapter 4, verse 9, they respond to those who are questioning them. They said, you want to know how we healed this man or how this man was healed? They said it was done by the powerful name of Jesus. They didn't do anything special. They didn't do anything different. All they did was declare in the name of Jesus. You know, the healing power of God is the same as the presence of God, at least for the most part, in that it cannot be faked. The presence of God on your life can't be faked. It can't be duplicated. It can't be counterfeited. Either you carry that presence, either you carry that glory, or you don't. And when you do, miracles happen. When you do, things change all around you. 
You become an atmosphere. You know, ever since that miracle with that baby whose eyes went uncrossed, in our services now, at the miracle services, I emphasize the healing presence of Jesus. And instead of laying hands on every single person, we pray and we worship, and the dominion of God becomes so established that people begin to feel him. I, I've seen people start shaking, trembling, falling on the floor, and like they feel this heat come on them. They feel like electricity shooting through their body. And some of them even feel like a wind of the Holy Spirit blowing through the sanctuary or wherever we are with the service. And I'll notice that out of nowhere, people will just start getting healed all over the building. And they'll come up and they'll tell people about the miracles that have happened with them. And the reason it can be done this way is because the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's because of the dominion of God. Acts chapter 5 verse 15 says this. This is the scripture that I think of whenever I consider this topic. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets. Again, this is Acts chapter 5 verse 15. And laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Now, many people will read this scripture and they'll say, well, you know, Peter's shadow healed those people. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible never says that Peter's shadow healed the people. Instead, it says that the people approached Peter hoping that his shadow might fall on them. In other words, it was the people who came up with this idea that Peter's shadow could heal. It was the people that initiated this action to lay out people in beds as Peter walked by. Now I got to thinking, what would cause the people to think that Peter's shadow could heal? What would start that rumor? What would cause that rumor to spread and be believed? It's not that Peter's shadow healed. It's that the healing presence of Jesus or the presence of the Holy Spirit was so potent, so intense on Peter, that wherever he walked, people were healed. I want you to think about that, that wherever he carried his being, the presence of the Holy Spirit went with him and changed the atmosphere in such a way that people were healed. And believer, I want you to know today that God wants to use you in the same way. I want you to know today that there is no such thing as the spiritually elite. Yes, there are levels to spirituality. Yes, there are people who are more mature than you. Yes, there are people who know more about the Word, have greater revelation, have exercised their gifts. But when I say there are no spiritually elite people, I say that to mean that anybody can come to those levels in Christ. We have to be humble and admit that there are some who walk in a greater anointing than us, and there are some who see greater miracles than us, and we need to be teachable. We need to watch those, and we need to say, Lord, how, do you, how is it you're working through them? That is humility, and that is a teachable spirit. We must have that. But I want to emphasize that no matter where you are in your, in your walk with Christ, no matter where you are in your hosting of this presence, that you can grow to greater depths. You can grow to greater levels. And I believe you can begin to see miracles happen all around you without you even being aware that they're happening. And people will be touched, people will be refreshed just by the atmosphere that you carry on your life. Now let's pray and let's believe right now that God would invade that place you're in right now and that God would touch your entire being and that you would be so filled to overflowing with the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit that you would sense him all around. Are you ready? Stretch your hands toward me. Let's believe. So Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your anointing that is now flowing. I thank you, Lord, that your presence and your power is available to us. And I pray right now, Lord, for that one watching. I pray right now, Lord, for that one listening let your healing power flow. Let your delivering power flow. The refreshing of the presence of the Holy Spirit fill that believer. I pray, Lord, that that would become a dwelling place of your glory. Lord, electrify the atmosphere with your divine essence. Lord, establish your dominion. Some of you, I feel it on my hands right now. There's like a fire moving through my hands. It's like a heat moving out. Thank you, Lord. I give you the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
Let fire fill them now in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I can literally feel it moving right now. Just stretch only believe, only believe. Stretch your hands toward mine. In Jesus' name, Lord. The presence and power of the Holy Spirit begin to fill them. I give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Wow. In Jesus' name. There's a Charles, Charles or Charlie watching. And you were a bit skeptical of this. But now he's touching you. And God's called you into the ministry. He stopped me just to tell you that. He's called you into the ministry. I don't know if you're going to see this as soon as we post it, if you're going to see this later on down the line, but he's touching you now. And he called He called you out because he, he wants to use you. And there's been a struggle in your heart. And he stopped me just to do that for you. And again, I don't have to call anything out for you guys. You just receive of the anointing that's flowing through this broadcast. Well, that's it for the lesson. Don't, don't turn the video off just yet. Um, I want to talk to you about the Spirit Church members. This, what you're about to see right here, these are people who've joined Spirit Church in just the last week. Here they are. The new members of Spirit Church, I want to welcome you. As usual, I want to let you know we love you and we are praying for you. Look at that. From all around the world, you've joined and we love you. And I want to say to you, welcome to the Spirit family. We're so happy to have you. Now, if you would like to join the Spirit family, which is our online church, then go ahead and click on the link that should be appearing over my head. And that link will appear if you're watching this on YouTube or at davidhernandezministries.com. If you're watching this on the app or you're watching the Facebook version of this video, then you can use just manually the information at the bottom of the screen. And on Facebook, you should see a link that appears after the video is done playing. So if you want to join the Spirit family, I want you to join in. Every week you'll get an email from me. This is weekly discipleship. I'm mentoring you on a weekly basis, praying with you. And there is some correspondence. Sometimes I'm actually able to respond to the Spirit Church emails. So go ahead and sign up today. Now I do, again, don't, don't turn this video off yet because this is very important that you hear this. Now we've given, and I would like to now receive for this ministry, on behalf of the ministry. You're blessed by this ministry, the teachings. Maybe you love seeing the power of God, people being slain in the Spirit, and you feel it when you're seeing people get filled with the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you like seeing the miracles, or maybe you like hearing the teachings on the presence of God, prayer, the Holy Spirit, spiritual warfare, all of these topics that I love so much. I love the deep things of God, and I know you love it too. Help me keep this YouTube channel ad-free. Help us keep producing these programs. You know, Spirit Church is just the internet broadcast of this ministry. We also have a television broadcast called Encounter TV. And Encounter TV airs in hundreds of millions of homes all around the world. Our viewership is in the hundreds of thousands, and we receive correspondence from all over the globe. So you want to help us? Also, we do events. We go and we do evangelistic events all across the nation, and once a year I try to get out to do at least a couple international events. But the more support that we get, the more that we can do for the gospel. Look, you look around the world and you see everything that's going on in this world. You see everything going on with the terrorists, with, with the immoral agendas that are being pushed. You see political agendas that you don't agree with. And maybe your heart is breaking for this nation and this world. And you're saying, Lord God, we, something has to be done. Someone has to do something. And maybe you might feel powerless to change it. But can I tell you this? The gospel has the power to transform nations. The gospel has the power to transform nations because the gospel has the power to transform the hearts of men and women. And as we continue to preach Jesus and preach the gospel, everything else gets added to that and everything else gets done. So you wanna make a difference? You can unite right now with the hundreds of believers from all around the world who give into this ministry. You can unite with them and we join our resources together to push the gospel message. I hope you do it today. Consider a monthly gift of 10, 30, or $100. Consider also a one-time gift of 10, 30, or $100. And those of you who can, consider also a one-time gift of 500 or even $1,000. Well, that's it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. There's this idea that our dreams are more important than God's will. We're a sinner, homosexual sin, heterosexual sin, why we were all yet sinners, Christ died for us. By your will.